There have been a lot of dumb false prophets down through history. I'm not familiar with all or even most of these false prophets, but I challenge you to find a false prophet who was dumber than Muhammad. We'll read a few passages and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. We'll read a quick comment from Aisha about some of the worldly things that Muhammad really liked. Then we'll briefly review a topic that we've considered before, namely Muhammad accepting a poisoned meal from a woman whose family he had just slaughtered. Then we'll read a few short passages about what Muhammad did right after that. And we'll see that as dumb as you thought Muhammad was for accepting a poisoned meal from a woman whose family he had just slaughtered, he was so dumb that he learned absolutely nothing from his mistake. So first, some worldly things that Muhammad really liked. Ibn Sa'd, volume one, page 469. Aisha said, the prophet of Allah, may peace be on him, liked three worldly objects, perfume, women, and food. He obtained two and did not obtain one. He obtained women and perfumes, but did not get food. Now, obviously he obtained food or he would have starved to death, Aisha seems to mean that he didn't get enough of the delicious sort of food he liked. He got plenty of perfume and plenty of women and girls, but not enough delicious food. Why is this important? Well, when we talk about Muhammad liking food and liking women, that's an understatement. Lots of men like food and women. Muhammad liked food and women so much that when some delicious food or a beautiful woman was in front of him, he lost his ability to think clearly and he would become so obsessed with having the food or the woman, he would put lives in danger. So familiar example, Muhammad and his companions conquered the Jews at Kaibar. After the battle, a Jewish woman whose family had just been slaughtered offered to cook a delicious meal for Muhammad and Muhammad tactical genius that he was, kindly accepted her offer. Sunan Abu Dawud 4512 starts off with a little passage about Muhammad accepting gifts. Then we have, this version adds, so a Jewess presented him at Kaibar with a roasted sheep, which she had poisoned. The messenger of Allah ate of it and the people also ate. He then said, take away your hands from the food for it has informed me that it is poisoned. Bishr ibn al-Bara ibn Marur al-Ansari died. So he, the prophet, sent for the Jewess and said to her, what motivated you to do the work you have done? She said, if you were a prophet, it would not harm you. But if you were a king, I should rid the people of you. The messenger of Allah then ordered regarding her and she was killed. He then said about the pain of which he died, I continued to feel pain from the morsel which I had eaten at Kaibar. This is the time when it has cut off my aorta. So this poison eventually killed Muhammad. He spent a few years in pain and then it killed him. This story in Sunan Abu Dawud is missing an important detail. We can find the important missing detail in Ibn Sa'd, volume two, page 252. The apostle of Allah sent for Zainab bin al-Harith and said to her, what induced you to do what you have done? She replied, you have done to my people what you have done. You have killed my father, my uncle, and my husband. So I said to myself, if you are a prophet, the foreleg will inform you. And others have said, if you are a king, we will get rid of you. Muhammad killed this woman's father, her uncle, and her husband and then she offered to cook dinner for him. I've never met a person dumb enough to think it's a good idea to accept a meal from a woman whose family he just slaughtered, but Muhammad's about to get even dumber. What did Muhammad do after he was poisoned? Well, what did he really like besides food? Perfume and women, right? There are a bunch of passages about Muhammad almost getting himself killed again, We'll just cover the basics here. Sahih al-Bukhari 4211 narrated Anas bin Malik, we arrived at Kaibar and when Allah helped his apostle to open the fort, the beauty of Safiya bin Huyay bin Aktak, whose husband had been killed while she was a bride was mentioned to Allah's apostle. 
the Prophet selected her for himself and set out with her. And when we reached a place called Sid as Saba, Safiya became clean from her menses. Then Allah's Messenger married her. Hais, i.e. an Arabian dish, was prepared on a small leather mat. Then the Prophet said to me, I invite the people around you. So that was the marriage banquet of the Prophet and Safiya. Then we proceeded towards Medina, and I saw the Prophet making for her a kind of cushion with his cloak behind him on his camel. He then sat beside his camel and put his knee for Safiya to put her foot on in order to ride on the camel. This is glossing over some important details. So, Muhammad and his companions conquered the Jews at Kaibar. They divided up the spoils of war, and one of Muhammad's companions took Safiya as his sex slave. But then, Muhammad heard how beautiful she was. As we just read, the beauty of Safiya bin Huye bin Aktak, whose husband had been killed while she was a bride, was mentioned to Allah's apostle. The Prophet selected her for himself. But she had already been given to someone else as a sex slave, so Muhammad had to buy her. What did he buy her with? Sunan ibn Majah 2272. It was narrated from Anas that the Prophet bought Safiya for seven slaves. This woman was so beautiful, Muhammad bought her for seven slaves, so he could have her for himself. But there was a problem. Muhammad had just slaughtered the woman's father, her brother, and her husband. In fact, Muhammad had tortured her husband to death. Then, after killing her father, her brother, and her husband, he decides to take her as his new bride, because she was so beautiful. Watch how one of his followers realizes how stupid this is. The History of At-Tabari, Volume 39, page 185. While the Prophet was lying with Safiya, Abu Ayyub stayed the night at his door. When he saw the Prophet in the morning, he said, God is the greatest. He had a sword with him. He said to the Prophet, O Messenger of God, this young woman had just been married, and you killed her father, her brother, and her husband. So I did not trust her not to harm you. The Prophet laughed and said, Good. Now, Muhammad didn't get killed, but that was just dumb luck, because he had put himself in the same situation he had put himself in when the woman poisoned him. He let Zainab bin al-Harith cook him a meal after he had killed her father, her uncle, and her husband. His stupidity there got one of his companions killed, and he eventually died because of his stupidity. But right after he was poisoned, he hears about a beautiful woman named Sophia, whose father, brother, and husband he had just killed, and he just can't resist. He has to have her. So he has sex with her, then falls asleep. Safiya didn't kill him, but she could have. Muhammad's companion, Abu Ayyub, stood outside Muhammad's tent all night with a sword in his hand, thinking to himself, Are you serious? Muhammad just got poisoned because he couldn't resist some roasted lamb, and now he's about to get stabbed or smothered because he couldn't resist a pretty face? I challenge you to find a dumber false prophet than this. It is back finally. It is back finally. This is a problem, and there's a reason to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.